Hi, good morning and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sean, the Deep Sea Man, and let's get back into the ME engines. And this time, let's talk about the PMI sensors, the online sensors, and the offline sensor as well. The online sensor, it's just two brands, ABB or the Kistler type. I've always worked the Kistler, so let's speak about the Kistler type PMI online sensors. Okay, so here we are. This is the Kistler uh, sensor. Kistler is the brand of the PMI online sensor. So this is installed on your cylinder head. It is sandwiched between the cylinder head and the indicator cock, indicator valve as you may call it. And this helps you read the pressure inside the combustion chamber. So this gives you, and with respect to the position of the crankshaft, a respective pressure of your cylinder for each particular unit with respect to the crankshaft angle. So as for the man BMW service letter, you read through the service letter, this needs to be calibrated once in six months by this device. So this device is called as your PMI offline sensor. That's right here. And remember, these Kistler sensors are very sensitive to temperature and the high velocity of the gas. So when you mount it on the engine, do not blow through the indicator cock. If you blow through the indicator cock, the high temperature and high velocity can and may damage this sensor, which is a few thousand dollars. This Kistler online sensor is installed between the cylinder head and the indicator cock. So it's like a sandwich. So there are two types of designs. Either it is at the top, on the top of the cylinder head or it's at the side of the cylinder head. So I will show you. Let's see the top of the cylinder head, how it looks. What do you think the function of these uh, online sensors is? Just to measure the pressure inside the cylinder? Well, you're absolutely wrong, I should say. So this is the PMI computer with the PMI auto tuning app running. So this is what uh, the online sensors help us read. They help us read the compression pressure, the max in the particular cylinder. After that, it calculates and gives us the engine power, the engine load, what we're running at. For example, now we are at about 61% engine load, 9,200 kilowatt at 80 RPM. When you go to the balance, it tells you the engine is evenly balanced or not. These are the pressure curves. So they are superimposed on each other to know if each cylinder is out of balance with your TDC line right there. These are the other values when you see it split out onto the engine where each cylinder is separate according to one complete revolution of the crankshaft. This is again your power diagrams. You can select each cylinder or deselect each cylinder. They are again superimposed on each other. That will help you filter out or you know read out the wrong, the issues, the errors in that particular unit. This is the raw and unfiltered one. What we saw earlier were the filter diagrams. So that gives you and you can also go back to the old references when you go to measurements you can just go back to a lot of old readings that we've saved at a particular point and compare them so this is all the advantages of the pmi sensors when you go this is what we will talk about a little bit later about the calibration of those sensors the other advantage that we see right here this is the load diagram of the engine so you can see at any particular point where the engine is overloaded what is the running status of the engine at that particular point right now we are here so anything to the right side of line number one is engine running perfectly fine. Anything to the left side, when the point goes to the left side, that plot will turn red and it will indicate that the engine is being overloaded at that particular point. Now, when you come to the MOPs, you can, you know, this is your tier two, tier three indication of the engine, the operating, you can select all of those. The process information gives you the fuel index, the estimated engine load. This is your online, online index calibration. All of this is done with the help of the PMI online sensors. Even you can see this auto tuning mode, the process, this everything in auto works because of those sensors. It, it works with a lot of other parameters and the other preset algorithms for the engine. This is the MOP for us and that one is the PMI computer. The advantages of having PMI sensors online. These are very useful and please take care of them. They are very, very expensive items. And even the lead time, you can't just go and buy them off the shelf. Not very easy to get them. But remember, if your scavenge pressure transmitter is at fault, that is, if it's faulty, it's the one giving the signal to the PMI uh, DAU unit, the data acquisition unit, you will not be able to read the sensor. So along with this, the PMI sensors do not work alone. They, al they work along with your crank angle the, the taco sensor A and B. They so let's just Google, open Google and just type man BNW uh, Kistler sensor calibration or Kistler sensor and just see what comes up. All of this information is freely available on the internet, especially at the man BNW website. So you can read through the service letters, which are very, very informative. And if you're an engineer sailing on man BNW engines, this is like the Holy Bible, like small parts of the Bible, which you need to read and you need to insert them and store them permanently in your mind so that you can just archive and, you know, take them out of the archive and use it for reference, for training your juniors, as well as refreshing your memories. So this, this is the sensor 
This is the calibration box and this is the online sensor. Please read the Man BMW service letter. So what's your take on the calibration of these sensors? Do we need to do them? Do we don't need to do them? Will they last a lifetime? And yes, if you need to do them, how frequent and when do you do calibration of these sensors? Let's talk about this right now. So the first time you will calibrate a sensor is when you're commissioning it on a brand new engine at the test bed of the engine where the engine is uh, being built for the first time. If uh, during running of your engine any of these sensors fail or you know you need to replace them for some reason, they damaged incorrect readings and you put a new sensor, that's again the second time when you would need to calibrate. The maker, Man BMW, tells you that we need to calibrate it once in every six months to make sure these sensors are working in perfect order. Another time is in the test bed run. If these sensors are installed on a test bed engine, they need to be done every three months. One more very important uh, thing what we need to look at. We need, we need to look at the estimated power on the MOP. So that gives you roughly your percentage of the engine load and you compare it with the PMI computer load. If the difference is more than even 1%, that's something off. You need to calibrate your sensors. So by calibrating your sensors, uh, calculated engine power by the MOP and the actual measured engine power by the PMI uh, computer, the PMI DAU, data acquisition and the sensors. And that is when you need to calibrate if it's off even by 1%. So that will help you get everything in order and at the same line. Calibration, I'm talking about the online sensors which are installed on the engine. And if you need and uh, when you calibrate these sensors with an offline sensor or a sensor that is used to calibrate these sensors, that calibration sensor needs to be calibrated once every five years. That's Man BMW's recommendation. And for some reason, if your PMI online sensors haven't been working for a long time and you are using this uh, reference sensor, this calibration sensor to measure the power frequently, in that case, you need to calibrate this reference sensor every 12 months. So that's about the requirements for calibration the requirements for the online sensor, the requirements for the offline or the reference sensor. Remember, these are very important. These are part of the Knox technical code. And that's why you need to do this. Clean traceable records is very important nowadays. You do your job right. You need to record what you're doing so that somebody, uh, if they need to check the previous records, check the calibration record, you can just go up into the computer. In the PMI computer, you can get all the calibration records. They're all right there and the calibration of the sensor must be done by an approved testing facility. It needs to be class approved or approved by the maker. So that's it for now and stay tuned for the next one. In the next one, we will actually calibrate the online sensors. Take care, bye-bye and stay safe.